And you have accomplished so much, not just on the dance floor, but within your life, you've got the Olympics. You've also had time, and I don't know when you found time to do this, but this is the book at the moment. This is Unexpected. Um, slightly different, this book, because it's not just sort of documenting your time as, as a sportsman, mm. but also your life, really. And you've been very open about the difficulties about, about your childhood and growing up. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was something that I was very, very keen to get across from the start. I didn't want it to just be a, a, another autobiography saying, oh, I did this on this training day, I ate this to to perform like this. I wanted people to get an idea of actually where I came from, um, the things that I'd done in my life, things that I'm probably not as proud of, uh, that shaped me to go on and actually succeed. Because I, I think often a lot of people go down the wrong path and then they, they end up staying on that path. And I would like to think I was testament to coming out the other end and actually still succeeding, so I think that's quite important. Well, your family were Jehovah's Witnesses, weren't they? Yes, they were, yeah, yeah, still are. Yeah. Um, so, so that, you say, there were celebrations that other school friends had that you never did. Yeah, well, I think it's very similar for a lot of people from different religions. Obviously, you, you, you don't experience the same things as some of your, your friends do. Um, and obviously, as a child, the way you see it is, is a childlike state. You sort of go, well, why don't, why don't I have that as well? I want to be involved with that. Um, but the, the overriding thing for me, coming from a, a religious background, was that I, I learnt so much, and I think what helped me actually overall have a good conscience I think but you did uh, rebel, though. I did well that's the thing and that's what I when I was talking about in the book as well there's always this sense within me that I was thinking what I'm doing is wrong and it's very not and I'd hate to upset my parents um, and funny enough they didn't know about any of it until I wrote it is so, that true yeah. so what did so, they say um, it was it was a it was a mixed reaction um, they I mean they, they sort of laughed at certain parts of it. I think my dad said uh, certain things that um, he thought that he'd probably done similar as, as a child and uh, maybe not as, as silly as some of the things I did that's but... really good that to do something like that it opens up those lines of communication where you can actually talk about it now and thankfully yeah. you did turn out all right but you almost had to go through all that like you said to to be who you are now yeah completely and and and, and it is something that you do silly things in your life, you do make mistakes, um, but you can come out the other, the, the other end of it. And that was, as I say, the overriding sensation that I wanted with it. And, and a lot of people, especially sports people, don't talk about that. Mm. Um, it's always, oh, I succeeded and, and I did this training, I worked very hard, I lived a monastic lifestyle, um, I was doing it from five or whatever else. That's often what I see. Mm. And I thought, well, that wasn't me at all. I had a completely different ride into, into professional sport. Um, and I think it's important for people to see both angles. So what made you a successful sportsman then? Um, I had this ridiculous belligerent belief that I was always going to make it and, and, and it came from somewhere that I can't really ex express or explain now because nobody ever told me I was going to be the best. Nobody ever told me I would go on and win an Olympic title. I just intrinsically believed that's what was going to happen. Um, I didn't exactly have the, the upbringing that would say that you would go on to be uh, a champion. I, di I didn't have everything when we were growing up. It was, it was t difficult at times, but I just always believed it. So for me, I tried everything in order to find what worked. So do you have that intrinsic belief that you are going to be holding the glitter ball aloft? <laughs> <laughs> have you got that? It, it, look, there's far better dancers in this show than, than, than But me. have you got that um, feeling? Well, now, obviously, deep down, you want to win. Well, That's you're a sportsman. Yeah, you're completely. A, you are I, a born winner. I, I can't get away from that. There is that. And, and, and Natalie as well. She's never won the UK version. She'd won the Australian version, I think, three times before she came out oh, here. Oh, right. Um, so she's really keen to win as well. But... <sighs> You look at the likes of Danny Louise and Ore, for example. They're exceptional dancers. Yeah. I'm nowhere near as good as them. Well, you Judge topped Mindy's the scoreboard yeah, week one. You flew out, and then yeah, the afterwards week. there was that you were going to have a meltdown. <laughs> yeah, no. And well, what was that all about? I think it must have been a slow press day because it was really funny reading it. I think the, the extent of, of the meltdown that was reported was that I, after we'd had our scores, we did our little pr uh, post interviews. Uh, me and Nat went and stood outside for a little bit and had a bit of a chat. She was quite upset, obviously, after it. I was upset that she's upset. Um, but they, I mean, I think, I think one paper reported that I was held down by four security guards or something. It was like a bizarre scenario. And the, the, the funny thing that comes from that is there's only one on site. So um, where the other three materialise from, I have no <laughs> idea. Um, but yeah, it's it, look, you, you obviously get very into it and you are disappointed when things go wrong. But yeah. it's a show at the end of the day as well. And for me, I'm a long jumper. I'm not a dancer. I'm never going to be well, a dancer. Well, you do it very well. I think you're very it's, good. Um, it's interesting because uh, you know there's the, the talk of the Strictly Curse, and you know you've got a beautiful dance partner, and you've got Susie, you know, sort of mm. uh, 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 at home coming to support you. And then you think, oh, you know, it's a difficult dynamic. But no, that's not the place to look. It's you and Rinda we should be looking at. <laughs> I know, it's really, really strange. We hit it off from the first day that we, we, we spoke in Roehampton when we had our group rehearsals. Uh, this is a few weeks before it goes live. Um, and ever since, we talk every day now. I've probably talked to him more than I talk to anybody else. It, it's, it's really interesting. But we came from a very similar background of a point of view of, of the dancing. Now, we both had no dance experience at all. We get to ex experience it together in that way. 
Um, and I often bounce off of him for, for all manner of things. He's one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. Um, but we do spend an awful lot of time together now, especially at the studio as well. Well, do you, but the, Susie, I'm assuming, I mean, is you all go out for a foursome, her partner, and uh, you, yes. know, you, you and, and, and your dance partners, you know, you're all out together and yeah, absolutely. everyone yeah. gets on well. Yeah, I mean, the thing with the Strictly Curse, I mean, look, if somebody's come into the show looking for that side of it, then it's going to happen. Um, the difference is, from my point of view, and, and obviously from Natalie's point of view, I come in from a very happy relationship um, with a young boy as well. Natalie gets married soon. Um, it's very, very different. It, it's we've become very much like a brother and sister in that way, mm. um, which has been really lovely. So I've got another friend for life in Natalie. If you enjoyed that, there's more of the same right here. And make sure you subscribe so that you never miss the best moments from this morning.